Hello and welcome back. Today we are continuing our Great Shing Run. Ooh, that was a zoom in. Uh, we are continuing our Great Shing Run in patch 1.5, uh, the full live version, the full shebang. Uh, we are hoping to make this a military industrial complex run, but last episode we saved Mexico, and when I said save Mexico, I never said it was pretty. Uh, this has got to be some pretty ugly border gore. We're hoping to maybe do some war where we declare war on the US, maybe for humiliation, and then try and return state or sway Mexico go in with a return state something like this uh in order to rectify these wrongs um but uh yeah this is pretty awkward as it stands uh we could also dominion them uh straight away we can uh raise that because we did manage to get them as a, a subject and so in that sense we saved them from the you know the pain of not being a subject of ours uh right now currently we are going after japan to open their market and experiencing some difficulties getting a landing uh as a result of kind of a 1.5 bugginess SAS feature not really working as intended their navies can just come back in and disrupt our navy repeatedly to that end we are recruiting a new navy but this is going to be a problem going forward we can still wait out this war a little bit though because we still have seven infamy of decay to get through so not the worst and uh coming on up we have central archives as well as the fact that we have just recently demarginalized some boyos and so we are going to look for both the literati and industrials we're looking to get institutional this episode um looking to get in both public schools and also get in a health system and so uh you know following central archives we will be going in on uh pharmaceuticals which is actually not spreading so maybe we don't go into it uh we are currently getting more research from our natural spread we're getting roughly 88 per uh per section on natural spread than we are with our primary research and so really primary research is taking kind of a back seat and we're just like luck of the dice out here uh but we can go ahead of time with our primary research pretty aggressively knowing that we are going to mainly lean on natural spread which is why we have like uh some 60 72 levels of universities so this is kind of what's going on and let's get after it we just gave up the japan wars so we could get some autonomy reductions in um you know before we got to zero infamy notably we got the ugly ugly mexico borders uh reduced in autonomy so now they can instead be ugly borders in yellow we are notably going to be pretty aggressive about exporting softwood one of the reasons why is the fastest way or one of the fastest ways to de-peasant pops is going to be with the softwood um because the uh the logging camps do not require a lot of construction if we come into the resources tab you can see that they only require 200 construction but they employ 5k pops and so this is going to be a really good way for us to both de-peasant pops and also uh go after some of these unemployed ones another really great way is going to be fishing and so what we will do is we will make sure we have at least one level of fishing everywhere and then we will set it to auto expand and then we will particularly look for unemployment uh because they are going to be having a 40% malice towards birth rate and so by you know saving these people from unemployment we can make sure that we maintain a high population growth um, throughout the game and have a more robust late game where we are not going to start running out of pops as early here as Great Shing. So Central Archives is going to be a particularly good tech uh, for Great Shing and we just finished it because we have so many places that have you know insufficient tax that we can turn this on and it should cost us a little bit of money we're at minus 9k and stuff's going to fluctuate wildly because of you know the investment pool and this sort of thing but it shouldn't be that much more expensive in fact it actually saves us money uh well okay saves us money for a half second uh but this is a very cheap price to pay for it this amount of bureaucracy now we shouldn't have turned it on right now we're going to turn it back because we don't need it yet but this is going to allow us to you know really ramp up the institutions quite quickly um you know once we get in on this and also uh it's going to create a lot of demand for paper which is fine but uh this lack of tax capacity in a whole bunch of our states the fact that we have so many states without tax capacity means that this is effectively way 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 cheaper uh bureaucracy than you would otherwise have uh for most countries and so this is going to be a very key tech for any great shing run we're going to attempt to right some wrongs here and restore a little bit of a border uh we have declared humiliate on the usa we have a ton of uh infamy currently uh so we're looking to do something useful that doesn't spend us any infamy and uh us having Ca california conquer them which they would we're willing to sway in on uh is more than good enough for us and so we will be returning california which of course will restore the border with nevada and unmanifest the usa's destiny 
Um, we have put in some other Wargles. They're quite fearful. We have a huge mobilization. Uh, it should be pretty easy, but, uh, you know, the guys are getting to the front. So maybe they even back down. Kind of doubt it. Uh, and we will see. Uh, Brazil's also in here. So really kind of a little bit of an America's uh, big, big war. Because, uh, well, America's plus China. Mexico, Brazil, USA. Kind of the big cats. Duking it out little bit of a moment of truth here we have uh they keep tying up our navy over here that is the usa and we are going to have a navy land on a different hq and it looks like we're not going to be disrupted either by you know their military their land military or ooh, i guess we are going to get a little bit of a catch here and we'll see if they send over their navy uh is this them sending it over? They might be sending Red Rover over. And so this is actually, if this is the way the metagame is, it's going to be quite difficult for us to, you know, land anyone, um, this sort of thing. Because even if we have an insurmountable or way, way bigger navy than them, we aren't going to make be able to make progress if this is, if they can just keep tying up our navies like this. Although, to be fair, we aren't, oh, well, I guess we are winning this landing. So we'll see exactly how this goes um, or shakes out. Uh, hopefully we can enforce on the USA. And if we can't, um, no big deal for us because we didn't put in anything that required infamy so no skin off our back just mexico gets some infamy Meh. so we unlock our first company and we are going to put in on a generic i believe well so we have a little bit of a choice we don't really have enough mines for the gold mines one to be good i think we're going to be putting in on the beijing metals because uh overall we have a let's see 200 some buildings already and that's a little bit more than this other metals one we could in theory we could in theory go ching steel for the five percent state construction efficiency and this is a little bit appealing and so the question is is are we going to be benefit more from this 35 percent state construction efficiency so are we going to be building at least one seventh of our construction on a combination of iron and lead or will we get more overall construction um from this steel ching steel and i do think it's a little bit close i think that this company was too strong in the beta um and now it's a little bit more in line and i think we're going to end up going with beijing metals here uh just because we like the throughput a whole lot more on this so even if it's not giving us quite as much construction as generic steel would we will get quite a bit out of uh you know uh the the throughput on these companies which is going to make our construction way cheaper we're on iron frame buildings um notably yeah so this is going to be great for us and so we're also exporting iron we can start exporting lead and really really look to push in every single one of these up to the economies of scale cap that we currently have which is 21 so we're going to come in here and anything that's close to 21 we're going to get it the rest of the way there so we see that we can actually not sway in on the uk here uh they're just not feeling it uh they have a cautious attitude towards us and we had swayed in earlier to get an obligation for them from them this is a quite a nice thing because that means they can't side against us but i think we're going to absolve the obligation and hope that this kicks us up above cautious because if it kicks us above cautious then we might be able to sway in for something useful and otherwise it's still going to be okay well it looks like they still won't let us sway in for something useful so we kind of wasted our obligation there but i thought it was worth a shot maybe it'll matter if we like let a monday morning tick happen um but uh yeah oh well we were hoping that would be cool it wasn't big nice we got religious schools we of course had to go religious schools out of any institution possible because um we have state religion and so it's required it's the law okay so we will come in and we will also where are they uh, it's in development now keep forgetting we're going to switch on to standardized legal uh filing system which will cover the bureaucracy cost notably i'm pretty sure we can't increase the institution another level off the back of this because each one is 4.5k however what we can do is you know we are going to sort we are going to actually sort by unemployed and every place that has a lot of unemployment that also has insufficient tax we are going to look to get rid of that unemployment and give our ourselves some bureaucracy and cover the tax all at one time and so this is going to be hyper hyper efficient and we are going to look to really really push up this bureaucracy number so that we can increase the uh the education institution also because um and notably we're doing it to 21 so that we hit economies of scale in all these buildings as well and then we will also try and pass the laws for getting uh public health insurance mm, 
We need the trade unionists. Man, this is unfortunate. Uh, normally, the devout will be in favor of this, but we actually can't do this here. That is unfortunate. I think we're going to hold out because swapping from private to uh, public health insurance is otherwise pretty difficult. Ah, uh, man, that's that's smart. Oh, well. Um, but this is going to be, at the very least, pretty good that we are finally going to be able to get some education access on. Um, notably, yeah, so this is going to be, this is fine. And we don't mind the Confucian scholars gaining clout. In fact, we prefer that they stay above 20% clout, which they're well and decidedly above. And we do have a pretty big, uh, you know, negative malice on our approval for a scholar officials because they had a petition we just didn't want to put through. So it is what it is. But now we can, uh, you know, try and pass some stuff with the industrialists and just look to be a little bit leery of maybe avoiding upsetting the scholar officials at this point in time uh, because we don't want to have a full-blown rev. Oopsie, we did a poopsie and enforced on these boys. Nice fixed borders, so now uh, Nevada will actually have access um, and also release the CSA because we can go after the CSA as well. I think we're going to damage relations with them, so we can go after them. And uh, not that interested in fighting just to landing through the bugginess and this sort of thing just to get war reps. So we're just going to capitulate here, or actually, no. We want the moral victory. We're going to magnanimously offer them a white piece and continue about our business. So we see three really big countries that we'd be willing to join our customs union if only, um, you know, they had a little bit more juice and we gave them an obligation. What we're going to do is we're going to look to specifically in tra increase trade volume with these guys as much as possible. That way, maybe we can pull them into the customs union anyways. They're very unlikely to be, uh, you know, accepting of our culture. And so as a result, we do not have to worry about losing migrants to them. Otherwise, this would normally be a concern. Uh, but considering uh, the AI... I don't think ever goes multiculturalism. We don't have to worry except for places like Japan, but in truth, we would probably siphon off Japan uh, pops from Japan rather than vice versa. And so we'll look to see if we can try and increase the trade volume as much as possible by just looking at what's expensive in their market, exporting to them, and what's cheap and importing it from them. In places like Southern Anhui, where we have, you know, a whole lot of unemployment, 500,000 here, uh, we are dropping down, uh, you know, level 21s in both furniture and textile mills, this sort of stuff, which will give us a lot of consumer goods. These will generally be profitable. We're also already expanded out all the logging camps which was one of the faster ways of uh you know dealing with unemployment but this is going to be overall be fairly profitable and we will push to economies of scale so we'll have throughput and we will be able to maybe start exporting some of these to maybe expand our customs union as far as the customs union goes we haven't checked our efforts yet and we do see uh we, these guys can't join yet. I think we're actually not going to pull Prussia in. I think we want them to form the North German Fed. I'm not sure if this is necessarily correct, but it will be a much cleaner map with them uh, kind of doing that. So maybe we actually don't pull them in. Uh, we will also increase trade volume with Burma because getting Burma in would not be terrible. And uh, we'll kind of make our... It'll make our market look nice. We haven't really made too many money moves, just kind of conquest moves. Uh, shout out to Western Australia. Uh, and also getting this off of Suez with Great Britain, which is giving us, you know, kind of uh, increasing amount of interest. We still have our boats trying to recruit up. Uh, it takes a while for them to come up. Unfortunately, they weren't willing to give us Kenya. We would have really liked Kenya. And so finding areas of ingress is going to be a little bit tough for us, uh, you know, as Great Shing. And we're also annexing Sandbass. We have been expanding here in Brunei. It's one of the really good places to expand it's only like a 1.5 infamy to puppet a lot of these guys and then uh, you know look to decrease the the infamy and i think that this nicely makes it so you can always be decaying and then you can sometimes decay down to zero for like those juicy targets like we might go for persia a little bit later something like this i think for our second company we're going to actually slot in the steel company uh which should give us you know five percent state construction efficiency which will be pretty nice we have the prosperity bonus that looks like we will have the extra throughput on the steel from here to help maintain the prosperity bonus and five percent construction on everything is super good we also just have this absolutely massive diplomatic play i'm not sure if we can swing it given the way that naval landings are currently working uh but we're trying to annex tripletania we're almost certainly going to be able to do that uh but we will also be trying to go after the ottoman empire a little bit liberating iraq and syria uh which will maybe give us some future subject prospects down the line notably yeah so this is going to be kind of this lower area down here and so this is going to be good for us if we can get it through france is helping us allegedly uh and so we'll see if we're able to you know get through on them we should have 
maybe did our better landing uh, on Tripolitania. Hopefully that doesn't come back to bite us and we fail on the Annex, which would be not nice. All right, the war is looking pretty good. We managed to land in on two spots uh, because they had sent this massive landing to try and land us, which of course was not successful. We had a bunch of people defending. Um, also, pretty cool, uh, Chile has swayed us. Uh, they decided that the natives were a little too much. They needed our help and uh, they offered to become a subject of ours. So that's gonna be big nice once we get in on that. Um, but this it looks like we're going to be able to enforce on this uh, fairly easy. Uh, this front maybe isn't getting... Well, this one's getting in too. Um, and we have a second landing to boot. We can't land doubly on the same spot. Otherwise, we could, which is probably an improvement to prevent, uh, you know, double landing shenanigans. But um, we will be able to get in here. Uh, we increase the education to the next level, as you may have noticed. Um, and we... We're kind of maybe thinking that we're going to go uh, theocracy here, but the main problem is that we have to wait a little bit uh, for our uh, approval on the scholar officials uh, to improve. We have a negative tick. Uh, uh, we have minus 10 from the failed petition. If this was not the case, we could make this swap. Uh, but currently they'll be sent to minus 16, uh, which is just a little bit too much. Um, kind of want to do this without revving. Um, we could fight the rev, uh, but it's like inconvenient, it's annoying, you have to uh, swap around, delete, uh, change PMs and this sort of thing. And we are sensitive to the fact that I, th I think it's the merging or the deleting of units, uh, and I'm not sure which, uh, that has caused us uh, to break the run before, and don't want to do it again, and this is the sort of thing you need to do in order to win uh, again against uh, a revolution because otherwise I think the the landowner revolution is probably too big uh, with 22% clout um, and so we'll just keep on keeping on uh, where we are right now uh, but um, yeah maybe look to get uh, something else going on like a theocracy would be uh, a nice change of pace we haven't done it before and if you're going to do it as anyone great shame makes a lot of sense we are currently researching uh, canneries right now uh, which is not why we're researching we want mech workshop because we have so many buildings that level 21 and this will give us a plus 10 on the economies of scale building cap we've already built up uh, our universities that are you know built tall to level 31 uh, in anticipation of this but we are going to come through and we are going to look you know specifically in the resource industries all the ones we've built to 21 before uh, particularly with the iron mines we will be looking to push all of these up to 31 in the sort of interim period in which we're getting mechanized workshop that way straight away we will be able to benefit from this additional economies of scale which is going to be more valuable than the previous economies of scale uh, but we're quite large enough that we're building into it we also need to expand construction out uh, a little bit uh, and then you know make some progress we're kind of reaching the point where maybe we want to start considering swapping the laissez-faire but we're still getting so much from those subsistence rice patties um, but if you add up all the rest of these that are capitalist owned it's starting to outweigh this and so uh, plus the additional company um, making laissez-faire a attractive however we do have the problem of uh you know the scholar officials overall not being very happy with us and so uh this makes it so we don't want to rev them and we don't want to rev them when they're that strong especially because they will pull the constitutional association they'll pull this out and we'll go to zero cloud anyways and we won't be able to pass anything although we would be able to no we won't even we don't we will only be able to pass stuff we have agitation towards and so we won't be able to do this quite yet, uh, but for what we will be doing is we will be pushing uh, stuff to level 31 in the queue uh, in anticipation of uh, this coming on up and still just kind of chilling as far as the laws go until we can pass something good. So the AI has been a little bit more aggressive than normal. We see you, the UK start this kind of psychotic play against us to ban slavery in Sulu and then conquer a whole bunch of stuff. And I mean we don't really care that much largely because well first of all we don't want to mix it up with the uk we would rather have maintained good relations this type of thing but the only primary demand is slavery so we're just going to give in and uh we'll just ban slavery in sulu and it's no big deal um we'll check on what they're you know we even have a trade agreement like this makes no sense bro um but okay maybe this is gonna their attitude's gonna change if it doesn't change from antagonistic we just need to join and play on their side and then it's very likely to change but that was just like a little bit of strangeness is there some sort of uh, promote liberal reforms okay so this is why um and so they they're trying to ban slavery in various places we could have definitely fought the uk there but um uh, no need. We're annexing currently uh, Peru, Bolivia. We were very excited on getting, uh, you know, the very big, strong company that's railways and sulfur, and then we realized 
It's actually in Chile now, because uh, it looks like Chile managed to peel that off uh, of them. Uh, you know, this company here requires Antofagasta, which uh, Chile managed to acquire at one point, but not too big a deal because Chile is a subject of ours, so we will be getting that eventually. Probably looking to vassal feed Mexico a little bit more, feed me uh, into the US and the, the CSA, uh, you know, kind of moving on up as things go along. So we're at the point where I think laissez-faire would be a little bit better than agrarianism after you know a long stint of agrarianism being very excellent for us uh the real problem is we can't actually pass laissez-faire uh our industrialists don't support it because we have this silly protectionist ideology which uh makes them support agrarianism more than laissez-faire so big sad on that front and not only that we don't really want to reform the government and then exile them the main reason being uh if we reform and then exile this gentleman here we will have to put the literati in with the rest of the group and we don't want to they can't sit with us if you will and we don't want to do this because we're much less legitimate and so we're just going to sit tight and hope that this gentleman dies or hope that we uh you know get access to an agitator uh that is an industrialist that's not a protectionist uh that way we can try and uh pass laissez-faire coming on up here we're really, really enjoying, uh, you know, having this highly righteous government because it's giving us loyalists from standard living increases. We have less loyalists from standard living decreases. And this is one of the reasons why even on max taxes, we're able to have 23 million loyalists and only 15 million radicals. So the three-pronged landing initially wasn't looking very good, but we finally managed to get in on one of these. Um, and so I think that maybe this is going to be kind of how you need to play in this current iteration, where their navies can come out, sally, and then go back in, and then moments later come back out and brick uh, kind of one or more of your advances by having multiple landings in at once. We were able to finally get in. And so this is going to be useful. Also, very useful is uh, we managed to get a pretty tasty sway uh, for become subject on the radical east indies and so we will be getting uh you know subjecthood over them hopefully we can win this war i'm guessing we can win this war um and so that's going to look good for us as well and we will see if we can reverse sway our way in here transfer subjects don't mind if we do except for you're only going to transfer kutch well luckily kutch is one of the coastal ones if i recall correctly and so this will gave us a native interest in india which is going to be quite nice um they're not willing to give us anything else it looks like well they could give us an obligation no big deal but if I recall correctly, they were antagonistic not too long ago. They're wary. And now by us being on the same side of a diplomatic play, after they say, yes, no problem, we'll give you that, they will switch and then they will be genial. So that'll be good. We probably would have joined on their side for free. And so that we are getting something pretty useful out of this uh, at the same time is going to be great for us. We will maybe use one of these armies or more than one of these armies to land the Netherlands um, just to try and enforce on the Netherlands faster and to secure Dutch East Indies or the radical east indies as our subject which this is going to be very nice uh here for us unfortunately our theocratic guy died uh from the confusion scholars and now we have a little bit of a decision i think we're going to go wealth voting um you know this is uh not going to radicalize the scholar officials we're leaning away from the scholar officials a little bit here anyways and wealth voting will give us the potential but it won't make it very likely that it'll happen anytime soon uh, that we get a little bit of a come up on uh, the trade unionists, uh, which in particular we do want. Uh, they're not very close, otherwise we would bolster them. Um, but uh, it will be a little bit easier with wealth voting. Uh, we will maybe have to start turning on labor-saving PMs way earlier than we otherwise would. But the real problem is we still have unemployment, and like we would rather go after the unemployment than I think maybe try and get these guys up a little bit faster. Uh, it is a little bit annoying that getting the trade unions up as China is so so difficult especially because the very religious uh you know the very thing we want to pass you know the public health insurance uh only the trade union is support so maybe we will be able to find an ideology that will support this sort of thing but if not um we're gonna like struggle to get it passed but wealth voting will be a little bit nicer and then you know it will probably be pretty good also um these guys will not be super super mad they will be still trending upwards because we still have this minus eight from the failed petition and so they won't be they won't be catastrophically angry and uh as we've mentioned before we're kind of moving away from them being absolutely insanely good insanely good because now
now they are representing a decreasing share of the overall investment uh, that we are getting into our economy from reinvestment as we have started to you know come up we've been over 1k construction for a while now and so things are looking pretty good so the navy recruitment is finally kind of kicked up in addition to us acquiring a bunch of uh, you know native interest in various areas uh, and so what we are going to be able to do now is put in a ton of interest everywhere um, I'm, we almost certainly don't actually need one in the Great Plains, but other than the Great Plains, uh, we are, oh, actually, we just don't have that many, many interests. Okay, we'll need to consider this a little bit more carefully. Let's uh, kind of pull back from those, um, and then we will want the Balkans, because we do want to be able to reverse sway for Greece if possible. They have a really nice uh, sort of thing, and this, I think, will be a pretty good setup. This will give us the most opportunities to reverse sway in, uh, which has been really, really lucrative this episode. Um, you know, we have reverse swayed both Chile and and uh, the Dutch East Indies uh, for free, for zero infamy. And if it's free, it's for me. So this is going to be progressing pretty nicely. Hopefully we can get, by the end of this episode, maybe we can get another 300 construction to get up to 2k to have a nice double bubble, which is uh, always feeling nice. We will, we are specifically, uh, like, really going after places that have a ton of unemployment and looking to decrease the unemployment. We are also adding another 31 on the universities in here. Uh, just kind of an update on the university. We have 85 capped, so direct research, we're getting 85. Then 417 uncapped. And so what this is turning into is over a hundred on or around a hundred ninety eight on average in terms of tech spread so whatever we're spreading we're spreading quite a bit faster than we our main research is going um, and in terms of main research we're going mechanized workshop into steam donkeys which seems a little bit weird maybe but we want to turn on kind of our really good company um in the uh what is it uh, let's kind of pull it up here this is the main reason why we're doing this uh we want to be able to turn on the kaiping mining company which is going to give us tech spread currently we have a negative modifier for tech spread giving us minus 10 percent uh, and so we have 90 percent normal so this plus 10 percent actually represents plus 11 percent uh and we will slot this in i think instead of uh the uh, steel company, I think overall this will give us more construction, getting 35% construction on both railways, which we're needing increasingly more of, and also coal mines, and also decreasing our need for railroads, and giving this technology spread. All of this combined, I think, is a little bit better than uh, what we got going on with the steel company. I still think the steel company is solid, um, and if we get another another company, like if we manage to find a way to get onto laissez-faire in a way that uh, feels nice... Uh, because this guy dies basically um, then we will be able to slot in all three and then we will have you know all the minerals except for sulfur um, and uh, because the Kaiping mining company is going to give us coal and we will have this nice construction efficiency so we will be like a very industrial facing uh, you know great shing which makes a lot of sense uh, once we kind of why we're trying to peel off of agrarianism here as well. So the UK was cautious towards us. We sided on their side in here for free. Just didn't even give us anything. Uh, we're not going to do anything. Uh, and then we were able to secure an alliance with the UK, which should long term help us maintain this genial attitude. The UK has the most useful reverse sways uh, like available. You know, between like all of the Australia stuff and all of the you know Canadian stuff, uh, such that we want to have an alliance with them because that gives a really really good positive uh, bonus towards specifically uh, your ability to reverse sway and so this is kind of why we've gone this route and will also allow us to maintain this plus 80 we have uh Oh, they must be bankrolling us. That sucks to be them. Uh, the We have a bankroll, an alliance, and a trade agreement. So where exactly is... How much are we getting from bankrolls? We're getting a lot from Diplopact. Where is this bankroll at? Oh, yeah, that's that 300k bankroll. So maybe maybe 2k construction is not really in the cards, given that as soon as the UK bankrupts, um, then we will be... Yeah, the UK is going to bankrupt uh, pretty soon, uh, and we cannot support a minus 700k balance uh, as much as we'd like to, uh, but until then, we're going to crank up as best we can. This is something we've noted a lot in previous Qing runs, but we haven't talked about it, and it is something we're doing. We're very aggressively importing dyes, fabric, uh, you know, grain as best we can. There's some more on grain. And we are really looking to import uh, all the agrarian stuff because 
part of what's driving our unemployment is the fact that if you build over a subsistence farm, uh, like let's say in Guangxi, uh, in particular dies, this is auto expanding, it's very profitable. Every time one of these gets built over, this hires 5k workers a piece. Uh, the subsistence farms, these farms uh, will hire 10k uh, employees a piece. So every time one of these gets built over, because the auto queue is like, hey, dies are great, uh, what it does is it kills uh, kills uh, one of these subsistence farms, which means that there's it's going to create 5k unemployment. So it's really, really, really important um, that we try and as much as possible import agrarian stuff in order to help stave off unemployment. You notice we are, we our unemployment is going down. It went up to around four and a half thousand, or sorry, four and a half million. It's down to around 3.95 million we're still going to continue to attack it uh in particular uh with our construction queue uh you know like looking where do we have a lot of unemployment can we make a reasonable uh like so for example hainan we have a ton of unemployment here we can make a very reasonable uh it's a reasonable place for us to maybe push this up to economies of scale uh you know uh the incoming 31 uh where the idea is hainan uh, they have sulfur anyways it's going to be very efficient here and all we need to do is you know add a little extra railway and then this is how we're going to kind of eliminate this unemployment because these guys have minus 40 percent to uh their pop growth and so this is overall will allow us to have a very a much stronger late game i think we might go for a very high gdp in which case we need as many pops as possible and so this is kind of why we are playing like this um you know i think we might even uh Actually, let's see what exactly these guys... We can sway and transfer subjects. All right. We can transfer to door for, to the uh, to us, which will be nice, uh, from our subject, who the Qing East Indies. You'll have to see it. Um, so uh, this is going to be, I think... Mm, we'll continue on a little bit. I want to see if we can get a another reverse sway in here, but we're pretty close to concluding this episode. So we got our hopes up, you know, seeing this play, and we saw, you know, both the, both the thumbs up both the offers supports, uh, but unfortunately, uh, this none, neither, none of this was substantive. Uh, they aren't at offering anything too, too big, and we'd rather declare war on these guys independently and just feed uh, whatever their, their whatever Mexico is willing to take. We'll just feed it to them. Uh, this type of thing, and so we're not going to reverse sway into this. Um, but I think we are going to conclude the episode here. Um, I think we really kind of showcased a little bit um, both a reverse sway strategy as well as. Um, you know, how strong it is because, you know, getting Dutch East Indies and getting Mexico for free. Um, Mexico was last episode, but getting, you know, also Chile for free. Um, all, all off the back of, like, really kind of aggressively um, adding interests. Uh, you know, there's... Uh, from the very beginning, we looked to get places uh, just for the purpose of having native interest there. You know, Bahrain gave us a native interest. Congo gave us a native interest. And we've gotten so many native interests, which has allowed us to have so many different interests all over the world, which is a allowed us to have these, you know, reverse sways that are extremely you know, profitable for us in terms of generating stuff without generating infamy. Our, we don't have a lot of infamy. We have basically no one in our customs union that's, like, not a customs union member, and we have, like, this huge expanse from the Dutch East Indies, you know, South America, Mexico, that we have gotten without needing to accrue any sort of infamy. And so I think this is, uh, you know, a bit interesting. It's definitely overtuned in 1.5. We'll see if they make it more difficult difficult to, you know, sway your way in. For example, we're getting to transfer to door right here. Um, but anyways, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please feel free to like, comment. oh, also we put in, you know, schools, just kind of a little bit of an update. Uh, this is where our literacy has been going. This is before we put in the schools. This is after we put in the schools. This uptick is largely because we're getting pops out of being, you know, peasants. I think it was off the back of us getting tenant farmers, maybe? Was that what happened there? Uh, but we have uh, managed to increase up to this institution. Anyways, hope you enjoyed. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and other than that, have a good day.